Good morning, everybody. I feel like I haven't done one of these like get ready with me chat about a topic in a while. So that's what we're going to do today. It's a Tuesday. I got up at six. I already taught my strength training class. And my next client is not till 6.15 p.m. It's 9.29 in the morning. So I'm going to make use of my day by filming some social media content. And you're going to get ready with me. Um, my makeup actually stayed on pretty well from class. So <laughs> I really just have to fix my hair. So let's do that. Did my makeup stay on well? Kind of. <laughs> Sometimes I think it stayed on well, and then I look and I have like a sweat drip, like where the makeup should have been. We're just gonna blend this out a little bit. As we're doing this, I actually wanna talk about body image. I don't even really know how to jump into this, so I guess I'm just gonna jump into it, but something that I've struggled with for a long time, when I was a little overweight, when I was at my thinnest and very unhealthy, when I was at my fittest, but still not having very good habits, and even now, I struggle with like just wearing a sports bra and like showing my midriff, and that's very like in, in terms of fashion right now, and that's kind of like what you expect, you know, coaches and I guess like, influencers or whatever, like people in fitness to be comfortable in, like a cute matching set that shows their midriff. And I wanna say right off the bat, I have nothing wrong with anybody showing any part of their body ever, whether it's their midriff, whether it's their butt, whether it's being fully nude. Like I believe in bodily autonomy. You show what you wanna show does not matter to me. I am literally speaking about myself right now because I think there's a lot of really good jumping off points within this whole conversation. But like wearing clothes that give me the opportunity to not look perfect is really hard for me. Like even now, like if I go back in editing, I'm gonna be like, oh, just, you know, you have like a roll right here or something, which I fully realize is stupid. Everyone has skin, everyone has fat, everyone has rolls, like no matter where it comes from. So I want to recognize that like there is a little part of that that is, I don't want to say like disordered because I'm not like doing anything harmful, but I guess just like a little bit of body dysmorphia or like unachievable body standards for the way that I like to live, which is healthy but also with fun stuff. The only time that I've ever been at a low enough body fat percentage to not have any of those like fat rolls or, or anything like that was when I was really unhealthy. Also side note, I <laughs> was not even comfortable still showing a lot of skin when I was that thin. So that says, that says something right there. That says that it's not the body, it's the brain. And I think that's like kind of the topic of conversation. Sorry, this is so, this is not scripted. I have like three notes that I'm looking at and I'm just kind of going for it. And also my hair looks bad today, it's fine. <sighs> I think that's the thing. Where does that stem from, right? Not wanting to show more skin. Does it come from a disordered view of what my body looks like? Does it come from my very Catholic upbringing and kind of this like shameful place? Because that definitely influenced <laughs> my whole upbringing. Or do I simply just not want to show a lot of skin? You know, this is actually, oh my God, my hair looks so bad. <laughs> this is like my favorite type of outfit, like form fitting, but not super cropped. So I have like a little coverage here, coverage here. It's very flattering on like the way that my body is shaped. For anyone else built like me, this is the Lululemon Align high neck waist length, my favorite top. I actually have a bunch of these saved on Poshmark. And I was like, when I have a little extra money, I am just going to buy a ton of these in all different colors. That's a little pro tip. Anyway, I think that's where I struggle. I'm like, is it disordered? Is it remnants of my upbringing? Or do I simply just not want to show a lot of skin? And I think that's okay. I do think it's the last one. Like the more and more that I get to know myself, I think it is the last one. But you know, I do wish that, and I hope that I can continue to do work on myself in the future where like, if I am teaching a class and I have like a role because I'm literally like bending my body, then I'm okay with that. I think it gets hard because I literally watch myself re-recorded in every single class. So I see like, you know, the more bloated days, the thinner days, you know, just all of the days. And I'm not trying to moralize any of that because all of that is normal. Even the difference of teaching like an 8 a.m. class versus a 6 p.m. class. Like I've gone through almost a full day of eating by the time I teach a six o'clock class. And sometimes in my brain, I'm like, ugh, I don't look the same way as I would if I filmed in the morning, but that's normal. But I honestly do think a lot of this comes down to to like unrealistic beauty standards in our society. And they've always been there and they're trendy and they go through different cycles, right? Even right now, like what was it? 
10 years ago, like the thigh gap was the big thing. And now apparently it's come back with like legging legs, which just basically means that like you have a thigh gap. <laughs> I won't, I'm not even going to talk about that in a video because honestly, the only time I've seen that talked about is people complaining about it. I've actually never seen anyone make content about legging legs just as a whole. So I don't want to bring more attention to something that I'm not even seeing, but it is like that. Like everything is just kind of secular and it's always pretty unrealistic. <laughs> oh no. There's nothing in here. Good thing Kevin and I are going on a walk later and we can pick that up. Also good thing, I have this little one. Ugh. You know, I think the big beauty ideals right now are all about having this like perfect symmetrical look. You see it a lot with like fillers and Botox and lip flips and veneers and all of that stuff. And again, I want to really stress, I am not shitting on any of that. If you want to do those things, you do you. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But the same way that I would go about working with someone with a weight loss goal or an aesthetic focus goal, I would ask you why. Is it for you? Is it for your health? Or is it because we're told that those things make us beautiful? I think it was two years ago, I actually noticed, and it was because of YouTube videos and making them and watching myself online all the time, I actually noticed that my two front teeth are uneven. I don't think I always have been, I will say I never had braces, so I never had any type of like corrective tooth stuff, but you can see my two front teeth aren't perfectly even. And for about a year, I was like, oh my God, that's so embarrassing. How did I never notice? Like I, I have to get that fixed. And I was like considering Invisalign or some type of just like corrective thing for that little nuance in my teeth. And again, if you want to do that, amazing. But I like gave myself the time to think about it and I wanted to fix it because everyone I saw had those perfect teeth, which are really veneers in a lot of people. And I just kind of sat back and I was like, I don't want to look like everyone else. I want to look like me. That is something as someone who all she wanted growing up was to be popular and to fit in and to be like everybody else who was embarrassed of her last name because it looks like Steve Urkel's last name from Family Matters. You know, someone who was bullied out of middle school and had to switch schools. Someone who was just like an easy target and just wanted to fit in, wanted to be cool. The amount of undoing I've done of that in adulthood, I'm so proud of. It is like one of the biggest reasons I did not change my last name when we got married because it took me so long to be comfortable with me and my identity and who I am. I was like, oh my God, well, why am I gonna change this now? <laughs> <laughs> Again, if you want to do those things, that's awesome. But I think that a lot of people jump into changing their body, changing their appearance, changing who they are, because it's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to fix these things. And it's like really unpacking that idea of like, what are we fixing? Do we need to be fixed? Fix it to what? Fix it for what? You know, even with something as simple as like anti-aging is is a big thing. And you know, that's that's one of the reasons I think that you see a lot of people getting augmented facial fillers and surgeries and injections and all that kind of stuff young, which again, I'm going to keep saying it because someone's going to be like, people are allowed to change their looks. I'm like, yeah, I'm not saying they're not allowed to. But even this idea of like anti-aging, it's like, yeah, I, I moisturize, I wear sunscreen, I'll put on like a serum. Also, let's be real, like a lot of this is ingrained in the fact that like I don't have the money to invest in those other things, which is probably good because it's given me the chance to sit back and unpack it. But like this anti-aging rhetoric, it's a privilege to age. You know, yeah, I have like I have a lot of a lot of lines on my face. I'm very expressive. But like who, why does that why does that need to be fixed? Like why does that need to change? Why is that ugly? I'm also saying this like fully acknowledging as a human that in our society even with wrinkles, even with uneven teeth, like I am considered conventionally pretty. So like I understand that privilege, but I think as a whole, like taking a step back and really unpacking like why you want to make a decision that could have some consequences is really important. And I guess that's our chat today because now I'm done and I have this random weird hair right here. Things I do get done to fix my appearance. I color my hair. Um, what else? Is that it? I'll whiten my teeth when I have the extra money to spend on white strips because that shit's expensive. I don't know. I go to the gym so I augment my muscle size. Ah, 
I think number one, understanding why you're doing something is super important, like taking the time to unpack that. And I guess this is like a whole topic for another video, but I talk about it enough. I do think if you are someone who is in the fitness space, who is preaching X, Y, and Z, but then you're not sharing the other stuff you're doing to get there, you can insert anything there. You can insert your selling workouts that can help grow your glutes, but you have a BBL. You're selling hypertrophy workouts, but you're taking steroids. Like there's a thousand different things in there. I think it's it's just really important to be as transparent as possible about what you're augmenting that might influence not necessarily your credibility, but just what you're trying to sell to people. So that was like 18 topics in one video. Thank you for sharing it with me. You've seen inside my brain now because that was my stream of consciousness. Let me know your thoughts. Again, I still have some unpacking to do. I'm sure we all do. And I think that's just called life. And that's the video. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you next time. Bye.